sign up on our email list at the front of the store. We'll send you an email every week about what's going on here. We try not to spam people and, and tell them, but if there's important stuff going around the city, we also try to put out some action alerts that you can go and either you know, testify at City Hall or go to a protest that's important. And uh, so we, we really try to keep it limited, but uh, we have lots of events, so please try to sign up on the, uh, on the email list. Um, but um, I'll stop talking here and introduce our speaker. We have Lucas. Lucas is a one-time, uh, he can tell you a little bit about his history, he's a one-time uh, documentary filmmaker and, and researcher in the 9-11 area. And that's how he first was introduced to me and the store. Uh, he made a film called The Ultimate Con. You can go on YouTube, right? It's still up there, right? It had one of the largest uh, hit ratios for 9-11 films for a little while there. Yeah, so it's actually the most watched YouTube video of all time on 9-11. Yeah. Well, there you go. Hey, awesome. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that was a good film, and uh, we used to burn it and hand it out to people. It was a good introduction to the, to the topic. But I hadn't seen him in a while since then. He sort of uh, dropped off the map. <laughs> but, uh, and then he's uh, he's come back, and uh, he he uh, told me a, a very interesting story about what he's been researching as of late. And at first, I was I was very skeptical, and I uh, I, re I refused to believe any of it. And then he showed me some of it in his presentation that he's going to share with you tonight. And uh, I felt it was compelling enough that other people need to see it, and so I wanted to schedule him a night where he could show it. I'm so glad so many people took the opportunity to come out and listen. So, anyway, without further ado, let's welcome Lucas. First, I'll tell you that I created this presentation for my friends. I didn't really create it for a public presentation. This was just something I did so I could show my friends what was going on. So um, with that in mind, I know a big question is going to be, when? I can't answer that. Soon. I can say soon, but I cannot say when. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out. How many of you all saw the uh, Norway spiral? All right, so only a few of you actually saw the Norway spiral. All right. Back when uh, Barack Obama got his peace prize in Norway, this appeared in the air, okay? And here's the video of it. Now, keep in mind that this uh, uh, was seen by thousands of Norwegians. And uh, basically, they tried to dismiss it as a Russian rocket. Okay, now ask yourself, would the Russians really launch a rocket over the head of a president while he was in Norway? I mean, no. if they if they would, wouldn't the news be talking about it every day? Was the president's life in danger? Well, okay, well, so you have this. Well, they did a really good job. I think this is one of the best jobs that the, the mainstream media has ever done in keeping something quiet, because very few people know about this. And uh, I'm not going to get in. This presentation is pretty much all fact. I'm not going to get into my own personal beliefs about this stuff. Um, but I will, I'm going to do this and I'm going to show you all facts, and then from there you all can put the pieces together how you want. So, um, if you come up here, you look, this is what was pictured. There's thousands of pictures of it now. Um, keep in mind, you see this, this orange right here? The sun is about to rise. This was at about 8 o'clock in the morning in Norway. Oh, I, I can speak up, or I mean... Yeah, I mean, I don't care. When, you're, when your head turns, though, your voice oh, will okay, catch sorry. on. Oh, okay, sorry. I can hear you good, guys. What about us old people right now? Right. So I had been researching. I started out with 9-11, and then I figured that and then, uh, once I realized that, uh, you know, all these things were a big diversion to try and keep our minds off something, I started researching why. And the only place that I could find out any answers was from the ancients. Um, the ancient Indians and, and people of the world, uh, they went out of their way to try and warn us about something in the future. Let's get Done. Done. <laughs> Done. There we go. Right. Could, could you move a little bit back in this way? Just to make the, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the whole thing behind me, I'm sure, is in the same position. I can lean forward and they, they can't. All right, there we go. Cool. Perfect. 
All right, so we had this object that appeared. They tried to dismiss it as a Russian rocket. For, for a month, you couldn't even find a picture of this on Google uh, Images. You type in Norway spiral, and it would not pull up one single image of this. Hmm. Um, so I started doing a research into it. And, well, actually, I was already doing a research into the ancient uh, petroglyphs and stuff. And what I found is that... Um, since it's decided it wants to get through this little loading process here. What's a petroglyph? A petroglyph is a cave drawing or a cave carving like this. I found that these things, these spirals, were everywhere all across the world. You see the one on his chest there. Mm. You see that one there. Mm -hmm. You see all these spirals everywhere. Now keep in mind that these things, <coughs> like for instance this one here, they show it next to a dead lizard. Uh, most of these things are associated with death. They see the wave going up to the mountain, the deer and the people running away from it, the dead fish. Mm -hmm. all right. So, um, these are all different various cave drawings. <coughs> now you see in this one, you have the spirals, you have dead trees, you got waves. How old are these supposed to be? Uh, these, they vary uh, usually around 3,600, 3,800 years old. Uh, these are found mostly, uh, let me show you down here, uh, right here, if you look at the map, you'll notice that these spiral petroglyphs are found in the mountains only. You don't find them in this part of the country, barely. Just a couple places. Same thing with over in, uh, over in Asia. They're found in the mountainous areas. And um, so, you notice these things everywhere. Um, literally, if you go onto Google Images and you type spiral petroglyphs, you will pull up thousands of these. For instance, here's a good one where they show the spiral and they show people guarding their head. Uh, they were trying to tell us something. And these people were not propagandized by Fox News or any of that. So they're probably the only trustworthy people in the world. That's right. No commercial sponsors. Okay. <laughs> so what I did is I took the spiral, which the normal of the Blu-ray would go this way. I put it in this position because if we saw it from a different perspective, say it was on the other side of the world, that's what it might look like. Just like, just like uh, this guy here with the line coming through. So, what we're going to get into, this was just a basic introduction to it. This is a pretty in-depth presentation. This is a chart I've worked on for almost five years. Um, this is the, the history for the last 500,000 years of the glaciation of the planet. You see we have 80,000... Glaciation? Yeah, basically the, the ice ages. <coughs> what? The ice ages? Uh-huh. Okay, so... Put this up a little bit. There we go. All right, so you notice that we have 80,000 year ice ages and 20,000 year warm periods. We are right here in this warm period, okay? And we've already extended our welcome in this warm period. The Ice Age has long been overdue for a couple thousand years. What this is here is this is actually our period that we're in right now. Um, you'll notice that 3,600 years ago, you had uh, the collapse of many different, uh, many different societies across the world, whether it be in China, with the Zia dynasty. You had Sodom and Gomorrah <coughs> destroyed, the fall of Jericho, exod the Exodus. Um, you have the, the Mayan calendar actually starts then, okay? Um, the Indus Valley people of India, their civilization died off. Same with the Soup civilization. Oh, Jesus Christ, here we go. All right. Um, the first Babylonian <coughs> dynasty ended, and then the actual Babylon that we now started. The Middle Kingdom of Egypt uh, ended, and the Minoans all ended at that time period. Now, if you go back another time period, there's not very many uh, records of human existence back then, but uh, 3,600 years later, we had all these natural disasters, um, and also the Byzantine calendar, which is the basis for the calendar for the Christian religion, uh, started right at this time period. If you go back in there, 3,600 years is when Plato dates Atlantis sinking, too. Okay, and then you go back another 3,600 years, and you also had the uh, end of the saber-toothed tiger, the uh, Irish giant deer, all the big uh, mammals of, this, of uh, the world basically came to an end. Also, you notice in here, what I'm going to do in this, I'm, there's so much information here, I can't completely go over it with everybody. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of breeze over it. I'm going to let you all have a, a disc and take it home, and then you can, it's going to take you a couple weeks to go through all this yeah. stuff. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, basically, so you've got all these different events that happen. Okay? Now. This is where it starts to get interesting. All right, December 1981, Astronomy Magazine. They're looking for a elusive planet much larger than Earth. 